This is the X Yachts X43. Now this particular model originally launched in 2016. This is a pretty major facelift of that boat. It's been a really successful boat for them. What they've done with this incorporate all the ideas that people have had to make it absolutely perfect. And they've done a great job with it. And it starts right here. This bowsprit is much more integrated into the hull than it was on the previous model. But actually the boat fundamentally has changed. What they've done is they've carried the beam a lot further aft. You've got a bigger cockpit, you've got bigger cabins inside, particularly the aft cabins. And it's a really nice job. And if one of those boats looks great from whatever angle you're at, they build these in Denmark and they're a nice quality boat. There we go. Pretty, isn't it? Let's step on board. I will give you the full tour and I'll tell you all about it. So we're going to step on here, one of these rather splendid fender steps. So it's a fender, but it's also designed so that you can step on that and climb on. That's rather neat. We'll take a wander around the deck first, I think, and then head inside. So we'll head up to the bow. What's quite nice is they've run a lot of these lines. You can see actually down underneath, so you don't get lines everywhere. One of these is for the roll of furling. What's quite neat is you can see it comes forward and then disappears down here. That's because the actual drum for that is underneath. So it's a very integrated unit. And this one on this side is for a spinnaker. If we look up right in the bow here, we've got the uh, anchor locker there. You can see the chain. Uh, the actual anchor itself lives underneath the bowsprit. You can just see it just there. But this one's interesting because it's a massive deck locker. Let's give it a little twist. There we go. And in here at the moment, there's a Code Zero sail and there's an inflatable paddleboard. So you give you some idea of the size of that. It's very comprehensive. There's more storage back aft, which I'll show you. Let's spin on round. It is a nice looking boat from every angle. We'll head down here. Another very popular option is the roller furling, where the mainsail rolls up into the boom. That's very good. And the lines come down and aft, and there's an electric winch, so you can power that one up. Another thing it's got on the X yachts is this rod rigging. So that is solid stainless steel. You can see it here and here. Very, very substantial rigging there. Let's come right on back. Very, very uncluttered decks because you've got those lines going underneath the deck here. You can see them all coming out here. And we come right back here. So the winches are here. That's the powered winch that one there and then if we come right on back there is a bathing platform that will drop down so you have to release this little fella here and then this section of the transom hinges through 90 degrees to become a bathing platform there's the hydraulic backstay on this one and then these are massive lockers underneath here as you can see so there's one there and there's another one exactly the same on the other side over here and this one in the middle is for your uh, gas bottles. Engine controls are down here. It's the twin helm stations on here. You can see there's one here, another one on that side. The reason for this is because when a boat is sailing, if the wind is coming this way and you're on a reach, so the boat is heeled that way and the sails are down this side, well then obviously your view is not great here. So you helm from on this side and then you've got a great view past. Of course when you tack and everything's over on this side and the boat's heeling that way, or well, then you can helm from over on that side. They have raised this deck slightly here to give more room in the aft cabins. Big table here that will unfold, so both these leaves are folding leaves. You can unbolt the whole thing, so if you're racing, you might want to take that off completely. But most of the time, obviously, you leave that in place. There is a deck locker on this side. So that's down underneath there. But not on the other side on this one. So that has been given over again to interior accommodation, which is becoming ever more important for people. Up here, this is quite neat because these, rather than having washboards to go in, it's got these doors that come across like this one each side, and behind those doors are your rope bins. So that's rather nifty. And then, of course, you've got the hatch that slides to meet them. So that comes out of here. And you've got the Brooks and Gatehouse information across there. Excellent. Let's head down inside and I will show you what she's like in here. There's various wood options. This one is an oak, if I remember rightly. And you can go for a lighter finish or you can go for a darker finish, but this is pretty popular and works very, very well. We will head forward first of all, I think, and then work our way back. That's probably the easiest way to do this. So if we come right up here, this is the owner's cabin. There's a door here, as you can see. The ensuite here is an option. You don't have to have that, but it's a good option. 
because it makes this a very nice private self-contained area. So you can see you've got the loo there and the sink and there's a shower in behind the door. I'll pull that across, there we go, you can see it just there. Again, you're seeing changes here because on the original version of this, this was all a lot of wood. They've gone for this much paler finish which just makes it feel a bit more spacious. And then there's storage in behind places like this. A little wave in the mirror for you. Forward cabin here, some quite decent sized windows in here. You've got them down here, you've got the hatch over here, but then you've got another window up here. Another thing that you've got in here, if I lift this one, on the right place, there we go. There's a massive storage void up here under the front. With a boat show at the minute, hence all the water. <laughs> Very necessary on a warm day. So There's all storage in and around, all the way around here, and you've got big lockers here. Like so. If we head on back, seating obviously here and here, but this table then will unfold. You can see there's hinges for it here. So that doubles in size, comes right out to here so you can sit all the way around that table. That's very nice. More storage down here, TV down here as well. These windows they made larger, the opening section, so you can see them here and here, and it's the full section of window that opens now, whereas before it was just sort of half a section that opened. And you've got these big hatches overhead as well. What's nice with this is they've angled them in opposite directions so they can catch the wind and just help the ventilation through there. And there are blinds, of course, that come across these. In fact, there are little blinds as well on each of these, like this. There we go. Rather nifty, isn't it? And since we're over here, this is the galley area, of course. This one's got uh, the standard fridge is a top loader over here like this, pretty decent size, but as an option, this one's got it, you can have another fridge that's front end opening just there. Gimbaled oven, of course, that's all gas operated. You've got drawers all the way down here, more storage over here, more storage along there, so plenty of places to tuck things away. And then you've got a cabin on this side. So this is a double bed, and this is where you start to gain a little bit from the fact that this is raised up and so forth. It's a little bit less squashed in. It feels a bit roomier there. You know, there's the clip here. The reason is because you can take these off. These are side panels to get to the sides of the engine, which I'll show you in a minute. And again, then you've got hanging lockers and so forth. Tucked away back here. Now, this is a three cabin layout. This is the most popular layout. What this has is the chart table over here facing aft. And this then gives you things like the switch panel across here, so all your circuit breakers, that kind of thing. There's a VHF radio down here as well. And then if we come on back, what they've done with this is there's another heads here. And it's quite neat because you can be through here and into the aft cabin. And that, of course, closes off like so. And this becomes like a day head. But at night, if you want to, with this cabin, what you can do is open this door here, which is to the toilet and the shower. And that rather neatly closes that off. So now what you've got is an ensuite just for this cabin. So that's rather clever. Now there is an option for this where if you want to, you can do away with this cabin here and have a two cabin layout instead of a three cabin. If you do that, you get a much bigger deck locker back there. The heads is larger. And then this chart table is a forward facing chart table. So if you don't need a third cabin, that is an option. This I think is probably the most popular layout because at this size, people generally want the three cabin, two heads layout. But that looks great, doesn't it? If we come right back here, that is a spacious boat and you can feel the beam, the fact they've continued it back. It's a nice wide boat here and it continues all the way back into here. Whereas previously, of course, this was sweeping back in and making this area quite a bit smaller. So that works very well indeed. The last thing to talk about then is the engine, and that is underneath here. And it is a 45 horsepower Yamaha diesel. There it is. And I mentioned those panels that come out. So that's on that side there. That side comes out as well. And I got a feeling that the back one comes out as well. So you can really get all around this engine if you had to do any maintenance. Of course, this is fine just for topping up the oil, checking your dipstick, that kind of stuff. That can all be accessed from here. And that's the hot water tank just above it. Now, in terms of performance, well, with that engine, you're looking at probably cruising about seven knots and 
maybe eight knots flat out, something like that. Under sail, of course, a different matter. She'll sail very comfortably at seven, between probably seven and nine knots. But as always with these things, you, know, you hit some big waves and get yourself surfing, get quite a lot of speed out of it. But reliably, that's the kind of speed you would typically expect when you're sailing or under power. And in terms of range, well, <laughs> when you're sailing, as long as there's a wind, you never need to stop. There we go. Fantastic. There we go. That is about the size of that. Let's come back out of here. And we'll stand back aft at the helm. And I am going to say massive thanks to X Yachts who organised that tour. Huge thanks to you guys for watching, of course. Let me know what you think of that one, and we'll catch you on one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>